Project Tiger was launched by the Government of India under its Prime Minister, Indira Gandhi in 1973. The project aims at ensuring a viable population of Bengal tigers in their natural habitats and also to protect them from extinction, and preserving areas of biological importance as a natural heritage forever represented as close as possible the diversity of ecosystems across the tigers' distribution in the country. The project's task force visualized these tiger reserves as breeding nuclei, from which surplus animals would migrate to adjacent forests. Funds and commitment were mastered to support the intensive program of habitat protection and rehabilitation under the project. The government has set up a tiger protection force to combat poachers, and funded the relocation of up to 200,000 villages to minimize human-tiger conflicts. During the tiger census of 2006, a new methodology was used extrapolating site-specific densities of tigers, their co-predators and prey derived from camera trap and sign surveys using GIS. Based on the result of these surveys, the total tiger population has been estimated at 1,411 individuals ranging from 1,165 to 1,657 adult and sub-adult tigers of more than 1.5 years of age. Goals and Objectives Project Tiger was meant to identify the limiting factors and to mitigate them by suitable management. The damages done to the habitat were to be rectified so as to facilitate the recovery of the ecosystem to the maximum possible extent. The Project Tiger habitats being covered are, Shivalika Euro Tri Conservation Unit, Northeast Conservation Unit, Central Indian Conservation Unit, Western Arts, Organization, Project Tiger is administered by the National Tiger Conservation Authority. The overall administration of the project is monitored by a steering committee. A field director is appointed for each reserve, who is assisted by the field and technical personnel. At the center, a full-fledged director of the project coordinates the work for the country. History the Indian tiger population at the turn of the 20th century was estimated at 20,000 to 40,000 individuals. The first countrywide tiger census conducted in 1972 estimated the population to comprise a little more than 1,800 individuals. In 1973, the project was launched in the Palame Tiger Reserve, and various tiger reserves were created in the country based on a core buffer strategy. For each tiger reserve, Management plans were drawn up based on the following principles, elimination of all forms of human exploitation and biotic disturbance from the core area and rationalization of activities in the buffer zone. Restricting the habitat management only to repair the damages done to the ecosystem by human and other interferences so as to facilitate recovery of the ecosystem to its natural state. Monitoring the faunal and floral changes over time and carrying out research about wildlife. By the late 1980s, the initial nine reserves covering an area of 9,115 square kilometers had been increased to 15 reserves covering an area of 24,700 a km2. More than 1,100 tigers were estimated to inhabit the reserves by 1984. By 1997, 23 tiger reserves encompassed an area of 33,000 square kilometers. But the fate of tiger habitat outside the reserves was precarious, due to pressure on habitat, incessant poaching and large-scale development projects such as dams, industry and mines. Global organizations such as the World Wildlife Fund contributed much funding to Project Tiger. Eventually, however, it was discovered that the project's field directors had been manipulating tiger census numbers in order to encourage more financial support. In fact, the numbers were so exaggerated as to be biologically impossible in some cases. In addition, Project Tiger's efforts were damaged by poaching, as well as the Sariska debacle and the latest Namdafa tragedy, both of which were reported extensively in the Indian media. The project to map all the forest reserves in India has not been completed yet, though the Ministry of Environment and Forests had sanctioned Rs 13 million for the same in March 2004. The Forest Rights Act passed by the Indian government in 2006 recognizes the rights of some forest-dwelling communities and forest areas. This has led to controversy over implications of such recognition for tiger conservation. Some have argued that this is problematic as it will increase conflict and opportunities for poaching. 
Some also assert that tigers and humans cannot coexist. Others argue that this is a limited perspective that overlooks the reality of human-tiger coexistence and the role of abuse of power by authorities, rather than local people, in the tiger crisis. This position was supported by the government of India's Tiger Task Force, and is also taken by some forest dwellers' organizations. Reports of widespread poaching of tigers in two of the premier tiger reserves of North India Sariska and Ranthambore is heartbreaking news for tiger lovers all around the world. Dr. Manmohan Singh, the Prime Minister of India, visited Ranthambore to review the condition and ordered a high-level inquiry to book the culprits. A special committee of eminent ecologists and wildlife experts, under the direct supervision of the Prime Minister, has also been constituted to find new ways to curb the menace of indiscriminate poaching of tigers in India. Present, wireless communication system and outstation patrol camps have been developed within the tiger reserves, due to which poaching has declined considerably. Fire protection is effectively done by suitable preventive and control measures. Voluntary village relocation has been done in many reserves, especially from the core area. In Kanna, Bandipa and Ranthampur, all the villages have been shifted from the core, and after relocation, the villages have been provided with alternate agricultural lands and other community benefits. This has resulted in the improvement of the carrying capacity of the habitat. Livestock grazing has been controlled to a great extent in the tiger reserves. Various compensatory developmental works have improved the water regime and the ground and field level vegetation thereby increasing the animal density. Research data pertaining to vegetation changes are also available from many reserves. Future A. Use of information and communication technology in wildlife protection and crime risk management in tiger reserves. Wildlife protection and crime risk management in the present scenario requires a widely distributed information network, using the state-of-art information and communication technology. This becomes all the more important to ensure the desired level of protection in field formations to safeguard the impressive gains of a focused project like Project Tiger. The important elements in wildlife protection and control are, mapping plotting the relative spatial abundance of wild animals, identification of risk factors, proximity to risk factors, sensitivity categorization, crime mapping and immediate action for apprehending the offenders based on effective networking and communication. Space technology has shown the interconnectivity of natural and anthropogenic phenomena occurring anywhere on Earth. Several tiger reserves are being linked with the Project Tiger Directorate in the GIS domain for wildlife crime risk management. B. GIS-based digitized database and MIS development networking in tiger reserves. With the advanced IT tools, a wide gamut of software solutions are available to improve wildlife-related information capture process, its analysis and informed decision-making. Geographic Information System is the most relevant of these technologies for natural resource management projects, including wildlife management. The mandate of Project Tiger is to conserve tigers in a holistic manner. The GIS-based database at PTHQ is being linked with the microcomputers in the Tiger Reserves, so that a dynamic linkage for rapid information flow is established using ArcIMS facility. C. Tiger Habitat and Population Evaluation System for the Indian Subcontinent, a Tiger Atlas of India and a Tiger Habitat and Population Evaluation System for the country is being developed using the state of the art technology. This involves 1. Mapping, data acquisition and GIS modeling 2. Field data collection and validation 3. Data maintenance, dissemination and use the following potential tiger habitats in the country are being covered, Shivalik Tri Conservation Unit, Uttaranchal, UP, Bihar, West Bengal, Nepal, Northeast Conservation Unit Sundarbans Conservation Unit Central Indian Conservation Unit Eastern at Conservation Unit Western at Conservation Unit, satellite data is being used and classified into vegetation and land use maps on a 1, 50,000 scale, with digitized data relating to contour, villages, roads, drainage, administrative boundaries and soil. The spatial layers would be attached with attribute data, viz. Human population, livestock population, 
meteorological data, agricultural information and field data pertaining to wildlife, habitat for evolving regional protocols to monitor tiger and its habitat. Vision for the future, the dynamics of forest management and wildlife conservation have been distorted due to need for income, lack of awareness, lack of land use policy and population pressure. Since the traditional use systems of people are neither static nor benign, these should not be overlooked. A regional development approach in landscapes having tiger reserves is of utmost importance in our country. It should be viewed as a mosaic of different land use patterns, viz, tiger conservation slash preservation, forestry, sustainable use and development, besides socio-economic growth. Tiger habitats exist in environments of thousands of indigenous communities which depend on them. Therefore we cannot view these protected areas in isolation from the surrounding socio-economic realities and developmental priorities of the GOVT. This calls for a cross-sectoral and cross-disciplinary approach. Tigers now need a preservationist approach. Regional planning is important around tiger reserves to foster ecological connectivity between protected areas through restorative inputs with integrated land use planning. The management plan of a tiger reserve, therefore, needs to be integrated in larger regional management plans. References External links Project Tiger Official Website, http, www.tigerreservatpalibhit.com <laughs>